56-yard attempt here with two seconds to go in the half. Burkett unloads, boy. This would have been good from 66. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he absolutely tattooed that ball. <laughs> Rich, five questions. You tell me if they're true or you tell me if they're false. Uh, after seeing what you saw on Saturday, are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Number one. Um, and I, I can't guarantee that these will be as easy softball questions as they were pregame, but here we go. Number one, true or false. After Oklahoma's 40 to 35 win, you can make a strong case or even a case at all that the Sooners are the number two team in the nation. That one's going to be false. For me, when you look at the the number of top 10 matchups, when you look at the number of ranked teams that were playing one another, I think some of those, indi not individuals, but those programs themselves have a strong case to make as to why they should be climbing the ladder instead of falling down it. And when we look specifically, I know that you've already mentioned this one here previously um, and previous to this segment on the podcast, when you look at Georgia's win over Clemson, I think it's going to speak volumes here in the, the non-conference portion of the schedule. A lot of people were thinking that Clemson would be a, a playoff caliber type team, despite losing a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence. They were going to replace him with the number one quarterback in his recruiting class. And nobody wants to attempt to say his last name on this podcast, at least. So DJ, the quarterback, Ule at Le Clemson, Le 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 there was, there was the thought that, that was he my would just at immediately step in and replace Lawrence and not see a ton of drop off. And granted, Dabo Sweeney is one heck of a coach who seems to be able to reload his team on both sides of the ball and get them to produce at a high level. So there was no reason not to have that expectation, but to see them only put up three points, I think should be cause for concern. While we can look at Georgia and say that good defense was being played, I'm not 100% sold on their offense. I just think it's very easy. And I wouldn't be surprised. I know it's highly unlikely, but Georgia could make a case for that number one slot if we were going based off of one one category, and that's what have you done for me lately. Alabama not playing quite the same caliber of opponent, but looking like a complete team from start to finish. So I do think Alabama's one. I think Georgia's two. I don't know who will be number three, but I think Oklahoma checks in at number four this week. Okay, fair enough. Um, true or false? The, the insertion of Caleb Williams in Oklahoma's third offensive possession was really something for other teams to be able to take note of, not necessarily for this game plan. I, I'm going to go with true. Um, I think Oklahoma saw an opportunity. I still think that was a touchdown before Caleb Williams came into the game. I still think it was a touchdown, but no, no one argued it. Right. No one had a little pity party for themselves and said, they said, cool, we're just going to eat it on the next down anyway. And we're going to give you a different look, putting that on film and seeing what Oklahoma is capable of doing with multiple quarterbacks has been something that, that Lincoln Riley's toyed around with in the past. You've seen different sets. We can even go back to Bob Stoops days as the, the, the head coach of this team and the bell dozer. There are different packages that you can include. There are different things that you'll have to defend. And goal line situations are always one of the most trickiest to defend because you have to go such a short distance with, with a set of four downs. Needless to say, Matt, I do have to agree with your statement saying that it is something Oklahoma is putting on film for these other teams to prepare for so that they just waste a little bit of time in practice. Because I don't think Caleb Williams is the 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 player who's always going to run in fact we can even look at week one spencer rattler tries to go over the goal line himself and gets met during the leap going over the top he gets met by a defender so it's not just a one solution it's not something that you could pinpoint and say this is the only time that this play is going to be run but you can be assured that caleb williams will appear in future games when will he be? When will he appear? What situations will he appear in? That's what they're putting on film for other other teams to prepare for, and ultimately, like I said, waste time on. All right, we're going to switch sides of the ball for the next two questions. Um, true or false? Of the young people who played on Saturday, Clayton Smith looked like the most NFL ready guy on the field. 
of the I, young of the think, young guys. Yeah, I do think that's true. Um, I was hesitating because when we look at the young guys, are we including sophomores in that guys who have a year of right, right, just, experience just freshman belt? sophomore guys. I mean, Marvin Mims looks the part. No, on, on the oh, Tom, sorry, defensive side of the ball. Oh, my bad. okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, like I said, Clayton Smith, size wise, I think he's there. I think he immediately stands out because of the physical attributes that he has. I know there are some things that he needs to work on. I, I love what Billy Bowman is bringing to the field. I love that level of athleticism, but size wise, I can't say that he's there yet. So I'm going to go with another true here. Okay. Uh, true or false. Uh, I think you've gotten a lot true here, that, which is not typical for you, but that, that's cool. Uh, number four, True or false, the defense, I've already spoken to this, so I'm going to let you give your take on there. Uh, true or false, the defensive performance on Saturday was not as bad as it appears. Again, <laughs> that that one is going to be true, and it's because of the product on the field versus the scoreboard. I know that Tulane was handed a couple of points. We've already mentioned the two interceptions led to 14 points. That's not entirely on the defense, especially when you give Tulane a short field. I think you can look at different moments as game-defining moments for this defense. There was one that, that was a huge cause for concern, but it does go in Oklahoma's favor. And that is the fourth down run late in the game after the onside kick, the fourth yeah. down run where Tulane needs 13 yards but only gets the 12 of that. So I think they made stops when they needed to. I thought they did their part in helping Oklahoma. But again, when you're not playing complimentary football, it's easy to say that things are out of sorts and to start pointing the finger. I do think the defense looked more prepared for this game than the offense did, though. So that one's absolutely true for me. Fair enough. All right, here we go. Last but not least, uh, this is conference as a whole. The Big 12, true or false, the Big 12 is not as good as it appeared to be with a 9 and one record on the opening weekend. I'm going to go false on that one. I think the Big 12 might be better than what they appeared. Now, we know that Oklahoma was going to be the front runner for the season. We knew that Iowa State being a top 10 program to start the season at number seven was going to look the part and was really going to carry the banner. There were some outliers, some X factors here within the conference, Texas being one of them with a new head coach, a, a new quarterback, and not the starting quarterback that a lot of people expected it to be in Casey Thompson. Instead, Sarkeesian's gone a completely different route. Looks like B. John Robinson is going to, to be the running back that everyone expects him to be, and he's going to carry the load each and every time out of the gate. So I think you've got three quality programs that are ranked inside the top 25. Now, I think Oklahoma State struggled a little more than they should have against the Missouri State, but TCU did what they were expected to do. Kansas State handled business. I'm saying you've got at least uh, a group of five that are going to be quality opponents, regardless of if you meet them here at the end of September as conference play begins at the beginning of October, if you have that week off. Or if you meet them later in the year, and we're talking about November, because mm -hmm. we know that championships are won in November. So this, at least a group of five right now, looks to be playing the part of a quality opponent, whereas the I think the verdict's still out on the others. All right, that's True or False this week. Uh, Rich has got both podcasts next week on the True or False questions. What are you most concerned about after Saturday's performance for the